Okay. Somebody give me a thumbs up if you heard the voice that we're recording. Excellent. Okay. <clears throat> so, and everybody sees this rock in the middle. I'm assuming it's an ocean or something. Yes. That's what you see. Okay. So, let's get started. So, we're going to open up a terminal and I'm going to move kind of quickly, but I will walk through it if. So those of you that are new to the way that I do things, I will move quickly. If you're following along, this is not really meant to necessarily be a follow along, but I do, I do not leave anybody behind. Everybody comes along. So if we're doing a coding project, if you get stuck, absolutely, we will get you unstuck before we move on. I'm a firm believer in do not write code that doesn't work. And as such, we'll move in groups. If you have a question at any point, just ask. If you don't ask, that's on you and it's your fault. Okay. So we're gonna set up a project real quick. Uh, we'll just call this, uh, I guess we'll say web 49-1. That sounds awesome. And wow, I got a lot of web in there. Okay. So, empty folder. Let's go ahead and open up our terminal. And there's a few things that we need to do. We need to do a get init because we did not clone this and we want the ability to, to do commits. Do we so, get a free git init out of the npm init or no? No. Okay, we do with create react app. But with create react app, yes. And so get init, we also want to do npx git ignore node. That way we have our ignore file set up. I also like to go ahead and do a touch index. That way when we build our package JSON, it knows where it's coming from. And now let's go ahead and do a npm init. We'll just do a dash y, we don't have to fill that out. So <clears throat> we have the basic setup there we need these three things now i like and this is my choice you'll develop your own pattern of doing things i'm a firm believer in do the easiest stuff first that way you have progress and even if you get stuck at a certain point you got a lot of progress done so i like to go ahead and get my scripts in and the next thing I want to do is go ahead and uh, install our packages. So we'll do npm i dash d, ooh, I ain't gonna get us anywhere. npm i dash, I, 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 dash d, and I wanna go ahead and install node on. And if you notice, I installed this who knows what, and we want to make sure we get rid of that. So we'll do npm uninstall dash, get rid of that. So you can do, just remove it from your package JSON manually, but it doesn't remove it out of your node modules and it doesn't change your package lock if you do it that way. So if you manually remove it, you have to do an npm i afterwards to update everything. And now let's go ahead and get express. Um, well, I'm a, Creature of habit, more, more again. There we go. Helmet, cores, even though these won't matter tonight, other than Express, I like to have those in there as well. Okay. So we have all of our packages installed. We have an index. The next thing I like to do is go ahead and scaffold out a basic structure. And so in when we're building a full app, there's a whole lot more structure involved because uh, you're going to have controllers and routes and models and utilities and middleware and all these different things. But today I'm just going to stick with the API structure and we'll go ahead and create a server.js inside of our API. Now, earlier, like 20 minutes ago, um, I just did a video where we built everything 
through a database in 47 minutes. You guys aren't there yet, but in next week, I'll release that video. That's part one. And we'll finish it out with authentication tomorrow. Um, and so I'll release that to you guys next week. Uh, so that way you can see the entire process, every single thing starting from scratch, including from a repo out. Okay. But tonight we're just going to really look at middleware. So we have our structure. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, Let that, me, yes. Uh, what was the, sorry, what was the first two codes that you used? Um, the init, um, which one were the those? Get again? init, get init. Yeah, those. That, yeah, so get init, and that initializes a git repository. And then the second one was npx getting nor, and getting nor is one word, and then node creates our getting nor file here. First two things. Okay. Okay. And we are recording this, so I'll make this video available to you after, of course, as well. So, all right. <clears throat> now let's create a very simple server. And a, a server really only needs conceptually, we only we can get away with two lines of code, but it's a pretty ugly server. Generally speaking, we want four lines of code. So we're gonna say get express require express. We then need to initialize our express app. And we're gonna call that server app. Those are the two you'll see most often. Um, if it's a application that serves both front end static content, front end dynamic content, and then works the back end, I'll typically call that an app. If it's only a backend server, I'll call it server, okay? We also need a port. And so we can say process.env.port. Remember that gives us an environmental variable, but we're uh, allowing ourselves to have a different port here. Mm, I probably got that in use. I think I have like 18 servers running. So we might get a little, we'll try that. And then finally, we need a listener. And, and so, listener, why is it doing that? Server.listen, thank you. And our port, and it requires a callback. And the callback can be very short. It's we just need to do a console log at this point. And we can say server is running on port something. OK, so at this point, we have a basic server. I wrote four lines of code. I don't know if it works. This is when you should go ahead and make sure that it works. And it says, hey, wait a minute. And I promise you're going to do this all the time. <clears throat> when I was a TL. I used to torment learners because I would use crazy commands for our package script. And notice I typed in dev because that's often what we use, but I made it server. Now, these are bananas, by the way. They can be anything. And I would do things like I would make it a llama. And so to run your server, Everybody does their standard thing like I did. They get this error that says missing script and would require that you come here to check. And so we'll run npm run llama. All right, the server's running on 5550. Okay. The next thing that you will typically see, and we don't need to do that for today's middleware, but we'll go ahead and do it because sometimes it throws a little bit of grief, is extracting and refactoring the index. So extracting what code we're going to put into our server and then refactoring it. We need these two lines to stay in index. We can extract these two lines and refactor. So let's open up our server. I'm going to move this over here eventually. There it is. So we can see it there. And I'm going to paste this here. <clears throat> so 
we need to have two things to make this work. And so I'm going to save this and I'm going to let it crash. And we're going to look at it real quick. And it tells you that server is not defined. Who wants to toss out the reason why we're getting this error? It's not being exported. Okay. Or whatever it's called. So you want to export? So we'll do an export, right? And we're exporting server. And notice, and we're still going to get the same error. There it goes. Server is still not defined. And if you look at your stack, right, it's telling you on index of line three, which is this, that server is not defined. And this is a real important skill that you want to develop. Because what it's telling you is it's not going to tell you to export something. It's going to say, hey, the line that needs something doesn't have it. So it's saying here, our server, it does not have server. Index does not have access to server. And so we need to go ahead and import that. And so we can say, now we look at our index, we're going to go over one, right? And into API, into server. And now we save it and we're running. So watch these errors, you're gonna get them a lot. Something is not defined. This is going to tell you what's trying to use it that doesn't have access. And so if it doesn't have access, one of two things. Well, I guess we could say three. We didn't export it, we didn't import it, or there's a typo or something like that. Those are the most common. Okay, so, <clears throat> We have a fully functioning server. Okay? Server is running. We've not written any code that doesn't work. And at this point, um, we could, I guess we can go ahead and do it. Let's do npm i.env real fast. And let's go ahead and touch env. Let's come up here and create a port. Anyone, any questions on the point? of an env file that's what makes everything like hidden right so yes this allows us to keep some secrets from github ultimately and when you deploy you're going to have production env your production environmental variables and most of the time you will take and copy these over into that and it's important that you put nothing inside of here if you have not double checked that your git ignore has, um, where's it at? Right here. So git ignore, anything in here is what git will ignore. And we want to make sure that it ignores our .env. So if you don't use the creator file like npx, getting your node and you manually create one always remember you have to put that in there otherwise you will publish all of your secrets to the world and whew, that's a both is a trouble because you never if you don't catch it somebody can not only violate your security but maybe you're paying for a nice expensive api and somebody decides they want to too so always double check when you create an env you're getting ignore is there. So now <clears throat> when we make a save, changing your ENV file will not restart your node mod. Notice it hasn't restarted. But if I make a change in one of the, or save one of the apps, it's going to want to change. Now notice this right here. We're still running 5550. Anyone have a reason why? Oh, uh, wait, say again. So how come the app is running on 5550 instead of our ENV file of our ENV port of 8881? Uh, because there's no path. 
close, we're not requiring the dot E and V. And dot E and V really should be the very top uh, import that you have in index, the very first file. That way, everything below it is affected by the dot E and V. And you do that by requiring dot E and V and then do, doing a dot config. Now, when we save it, we are now accessing our E and V port of 8881. Um, also, what extension are you using? It's like, it's like auto, it's like auto completing or like. Um, oh, so I was on the the initial beta testing for um, uh, what's it called? Code API or it uses an an AI to help you write code. It's moderate. Sometimes it works all right. Sometimes it's complete garbage. Okay. But it's, I can't think of what it's called. But it's part of the open API project that, uh, from Google, that uses machine learning for anything, in this case, writing software. Oh, that's cool. So sometimes it will, I do things enough times it begins to learn my style. And then just as soon as I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm comfortable with it, it'll come up with something ridiculous and break <laughs> everything. So yeah, it's kind of a pain. So at this point, we don't really need the index anymore. We're good with that. So here we have a server running, but we're not actually doing anything with it, right? And now we get to start looking at what is middleware. Middleware is everything that Express does. And if you think about the JavaScript as one big long file, right? Because what's happening is we're starting right here conceptually. We start at this line, we go to this line right here, server. So that hops over. This is the next line, the next line. When it gets to here, that comes back over to here, here, and here, right? So we just imagine this great big long line of code that is running from top to bottom. And so middleware is when you're using Express is basically everything that happens from this line to this line. No matter how many imports, exports, everything's that happen, everything in Express is middleware. And so that's the first key to kind of wrap our brains around is everything is middleware. Now there's a few standard ways that we interact with the middleware. Okay? And the first way that we interact with middleware is through other packages. So we're gonna install a couple of packages. So we're gonna install Helmet. We're gonna install, uh, what else did we do? We got Morgan and we got cores okay these are i'm a i do no sql mongoose mongo database so if you saw it was trying to say hey you forgot one yeah we're not we're not doing mongo today so these are middleware but in and of themselves they are not doing anything right we've only required them we have access to them <coughs> excuse me but they're not actually doing anything. And these are our packages that we get off of NPM, right? And so now, oh, excuse me one second. I'm gonna cough my brains up, I think. Okay. So now we want to make use of that middleware. And we do that by invoking Express, which we've called server. Right? So we have server and we're going to use the use function or the use method that is going to allow us, one of the options is to make use of these packages 
that we've already installed. And so we want to, in our middleware, we want to make use of Helmet. We also want to make use of Morgan. And we want, I like the dev, there's Tiny, there's several choices. If you want to go look and see which ones, um, just go to NPM and look up the Morgan. And then finally, Coors. The reason we got Coors in here is just get in the in the habit of using Coors because anything you publish is gonna have to have it. These have now become middleware. So here we have taken a package and used that as middleware, option number one. The next option that we have is our own imports, which we'll look at in a moment. And then the third option is um, we can build our functions in line and use that as middleware. So we're gonna we're gonna look at all three of those options. But we really need to have something happening on our on our server, right? So I'm just going to write a simple git function that will get it slash and the here where we're just going to use this to test our middleware but normally what i do is i make slash a server status so that um it makes it easy to see if your server's up and running one and two when i was a student i got tired of the front end devs going hey your server's not working and so I came up with this little system that solves that problem because if they can access this line, they can see that it's real time and hey, the fault is not mine. It's probably the way that you're calling it, right? So I'm gonna do a res.status200 and I want to return JSON. And I typically return three things. I return a status of 200, that way it's very clear everything's working. I return a message. This is great node fun. And finally, as my final little jab, I return time. And we'll look at that in a second. So oops, we're going to say new date, if I can spell. And we want two local time stream. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna save it again, make sure that our server's running. And now we want to test this, make sure that this endpoint is working and we can then start to write some absolutely useless middleware, become overly burdened in middleware and hopefully it will make a lot of sense. So when I'm doing quick testing, I use Thunder Client and Thunder client is basically Postman inside of uh, Visual Studio. So we'll move this. And I, what I like about it, it's in the tab here. I can, uh, what are we running on? 80, 80, 80, no, 8881. There we go. At slash. There we go. So our server's running. And my current time, notice I said two local time string. So that's giving me my time. If you were running that, you would get whatever time zone you're in. But we ran it at 6.33 and 44, uh, 46 seconds. If we run it again, now we're at 34.09. So you can see how this can be really beneficial. If you're not sure that your server is running, you just go to your endpoint slash, oh, yep, it's running. So there must be some other problem if it's not returning what we want. So this also, Git is one of the middleware options used, post, right? These are our HTTP, HTTP verbs. And, but this is still middleware. This is a different kind of express middleware, but it's still middleware. So now let's build some middleware. Normally you would build middleware inside of a middleware, middle, wow. I dare anybody to say all that that many times. 
middleware folder that has your middlewares inside it. And yes, middlewares with an S is the create, the cre, <laughs> I can't even talk now, the correct way to say it. It is not middleware singular, but it is in fact middlewares. And so if you see it that way, of course, spell check hates it. And, but it also hates if you say the maps too. So I guess maybe it's prejudice against non-American English, I don't know. But that is the proper terminology for it. So you will see it that way. And really what it does is middleware, as we said in this case, middleware is anything that happens between line six and 23 now. But we can also custom write our own middleware that we can insert in the middle of our HTTP verb endpoint to do something. So let's create one. So let's create one that says, uh, we'll say first, because I am really good at naming. And I highly, highly original, and this is our first middleware. So we're going to call it first. So we can create, we can just write a function. And for now, let's just console log and we'll say first middle, we'll even do it properly, middlewares, and we'll save it. Obviously, nothing has happened, right? The server is still doing what it's going to do. And if we send again, other than Morgan, the Morgan middleware here, which is providing us with our verb, our path, our status code, and then our time, nothing is happening. And this is where it really gets to be fun in how you use it. It doesn't really matter what you put in. You have to just remember a couple of things. All middleware needs three parameters rec, res, and next. And we'll look at what happens when you forget one. Um, typically, next is the one that's forgotten. So <clears throat> we have this piece of middleware, we call it first. And if you think about code linearly, we're going to access this slash endpoint. And then we want to do something in the middle. So this is really maybe a middle middleware, right? Because we're already in middleware and we're doing another middle of the middleware. And we're gonna put it right here. And we can just say first, we call that function. So when we run, and this is important. So notice <clears throat> that I didn't save it. Let's try that again that we get our console log. So we hit slash, it said, hey, there's a middleware. We hop up here to first, we run through middleware. It says console log first middleware. When that's done, so we got our first middlewares here. Notice that it's still spooling. And this is gonna happen often. We all, we, we all will forget this. I forget it all the time. Um, get moving fast or whatever, but it's still spooling. And the first thing is, wait a minute, this endpoint was just working, what's wrong now? Well, what's wrong is it did exactly what we told it to. You come to here, you run this first function and you print console log. We did not give it a means to move forward. And that's where next comes in. and I'd like to say that, you know, next is a really complicated theory, but it's not. After you do console log, next, and you move to the next thing. Now, if we save it and we run it again, we get our middleware and look at the flow, right? So we hit this endpoint. It immediately went to first. It logged first middleware. Then it continued to what would be the rec and res. We then get to see Morgan connecting to that endpoint. Up until here, nothing happened with the endpoint. And so if you're ever unsure about what's happening, 
consul log, consul log, consul log. And don't be afraid to consul log. And if any of you come to a, a training session or help desk or anything like that, and you're not sure what's happening, we're going to consul log a lot because unlike front end, we don't get to see any visual representation. So we have to build it ourselves, right? We have to figure out a way. So <clears throat> now let's look at what other things we could do. So let's say, let's copy this and let's make a second. Again, highly original. And we'll call this, of course, our second middleware. So what happens if we put second here? <clears throat> What's going to happen with our console logs? Anywhere. It's going to do the second, then the first one. All right, let's run it. All right. So it hits the second middleware because we said after slash, go to second. Once that goes to next, it's going to go to first. Next is going to then load our endpoint, and we're going to get a response. And this is the entirety of what middleware is. Now, that said, we have all the tools available to us in JavaScript available inside of this middleware. So let's do this. Let's make a third. Actually, let's. Okay, so let's say third. And this time, let's call that from here. Okay. So what's going to happen with our middleware now? What's going to be the process? So let's walk through it, right? We are going to go to slash. We're going to hit second. Second's going to come up here. It's going to console log second. Once it console logs, it's going to go to next. That's going to go to first. When we get to first, it's going to say first middleware. It should then call third and do third middleware and then go to next. All right. So notice we have two opportunities to go to next. We have one there and one here. So let's run this. Bom, bom, bom. Okay. Let's look at what it says. Next is not a function. Interesting, okay. So now it's saying next is not a function and it's telling us that the problem starts at JS23 and the next issue is at 14 here. Oh, problematic, right? So, you're not always going to have the answer. Nobody will ever have the answer all the time. So what do you think? What is, let's try a possibility. How can we fix this middleware? Remove the next on third. All right, let's do it. Okay, so we will comment that out. Oops, I don't know what I want to do. We will comment that out. Let's run it. Let's get over here. Server's running again and we send it. So why was that next a problem? So it'll create a loop. I'm sorry? Because it would create a loop. Ha -ha, create yes, right? Because it's going to try to next, but it's also trying to next here because when we run down our code, it's like, okay, third, I ran that. Next, next, what's happening? And we get the spiral out of control. So you can call functions, you can modify functions, and we're going to modify one. We'll do some, I don't know, we'll make some gatekeeping or something. Um, but ultimately, you can make them do about anything that you want, but you do have to be aware that you cannot double up, right? And because this function is called and returned, then what happens is it calls third and then moves to next. Right? And so if you see that error, 
do exactly what we did. Worst case scenario, you comment it out, it doesn't work, you try the other one. It's gonna work one of two ways, right? But in this case, if you follow your code, it tells you that to call this next. And what is really important also is that you have access to these rec and res uh, variables where rec is the request, right? That's what the front end says, hey, I need this. You do everything that you package that up and you send it back and that's the response. But we do have the ability to manipulate uh, that as well. Okay, so we could say rec.message and sure, hello. Now, what's interesting is if we run this, nothing changes, right? Everything works the same way, but <clears throat> what we want to know is, second in this case is our first middleware inside of this function, right? So here we're saying, hey, rec.message is equal to hello. And where can we use that? Well, let's look and see. So if we said console log rec.message and we run, ah, now we get another break, right? And this one is reloaded here. And it says, wait a minute, cannot read property of message. So we do have the ability to add, and you guys have already done that, so we're not going to spend a lot of time on that, but I want you to think about where and who has access to what. Do we have access to this anywhere based on our structure? What do you think? No. no. Okay. And how could we test that? console log, right? We could say, well, do we have rec dot message here? Oh, wait a minute. We do have access to it. There's, there's our hello. So <clears throat> the reason we don't have access to it here is because we've called this function that is outside. Now, the interesting thing is we could actually, we get rid of rec res and next and we run it, we see no difference in our code because this function is not making use of rec res and next. Now, looking at our structure, so we have access to our rec.message in second, which is our first middleware. And we have access to it at the end of the chain do we have access to it in first? And if so, at what location in first do we have access to it? What do you think? Do we have access and if so, where? I'm lost. <laughs> okay. Where are you lost? I, I'm just confused. Well, I, talk I, it through. Uh, it. So we're trying to figure out if why the first, second, or third does not have access to guard. We're trying to figure out. So this second is the very first of the middlewares related to this endpoint, right? And we have assigned rec.message the value of hello. And we know because we've console logged it here at the end. So we have X, we have, we created here and we have access to it here. Do we have access to it in first? We tried it in third, it did not work, right? And we'll look at that in a moment, but do we have access to this rec message in first? So right here in the middle, of course I could have put them back in order, but that wouldn't be any fun. What fun would that be? Not confusing. So do we have access to rec.message in our first function? What do you say, Lorenzo? Yes or no? Uh, yes, because it's after, it's before, it's after second. Okay, so you say yes. And where can we console log to confirm that? Um, 
console log after call uh, console log after the third function call. Okay. Oh, after okay. So you want to console log here, All right? So let's look at it. rec dot msg, and here we go. Send. So notice, let's look at our code. And this becomes a little funky, right? But so let's follow it through. It goes to slash. We hit second, comes up here, console logs, second middleware. It goes to next. And then from next, it goes to first. And it says first middlewares. It then goes to third. Third middlewares hops over here to that, then comes back up and says hello, and then it lands in here and says hello. So if you're not sure what your middleware is doing, log it and test it. Make sure what it's doing. Now, I have one more question for you since we're here. We have set the value of rec message in second or first middleware. We know we can access that in the second middleware. Can we change that? Actually, let's leave that there. We will go back to that. Can we change rec.message here? Could we say rec.message is now equal to, we had a baby, it's a boy. Will that work? And if that does work, what will our final, our end of the code, this console log, what will it say? What do you think? Now, I will tell you all, I used to be a college professor. I'm really good at calling on people if there's too much silence. <laughs> so this is your one and final warning, somebody to speak up. Uh, yeah, I think we can assign it. All right, and so first. let's run. Let's run it. And booyah, we did change the value. So we have our hello, right? Right here, it says hello. We then change the value, and we pass that on so that at the end, we had a baby, it's a boy. I don't know if you guys have remember that commercial or not. I think it was about how expensive long distance was. And so our baby was calling collect or something. I think that's what it was. They were calling collect and they wanted to tell the family the message. So the name was, we had a baby as a boy. <laughs> and so we can change that. We have full control over that. I think I'm and too young to get that joke. Yeah, YouTube it. And, <laughs> and I was at, the very first Star Wars release in the theaters. Wow. And I've been collecting Darth Vader since the second <laughs> episode five came out in 1980. I've been collecting Darth Vader since then. I have about 5,000 Darth Vader figures alone. Dang. Big flex, yeah. man. The I've got one of the wall. largest collection. Oh, Maybe. man, I got everything. Nice. I've got the helmets. I've got the actual uh, James Earl Jones voice modulator Darth Vader helmet with breathing effects and smoke. Wow. Cool. You, you got to show us after. Yeah, I've had to. Well, I, that's in my, it's in my lockbox back there. But when, like, when I was a professor at New Mexico State, I can get it and we can do it one of these days. Um, but when I was at New Mexico State, my official Yes, this is a college professor photograph was me in a Darth Vader hood, the entire helmet, the cape, wearing a t-shirt that said New Mexico State. That was my official. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. They finally just gave up and said, fine, let the guy have it. He's going to throw a fit if he doesn't. So, <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, so middleware gives us all kinds of opportunity we can start to do things in middleware. And this is where we start gatekeeping. But before we do gatekeeping, I want the question, here's the question. 
is there any way that you can see where we can console log, I'm just going to say rec.message in a string for now. Um, is there any way that we can pass that to our third? What do you think? So we follow our code. We hit second, right? We hit second. We call message. We then go to next. That's first. We console log. We call third. Is there a way to send that value to this function? Parameters? All right. And how would we do that? I don't know. That was a guess. <laughs> yeah, second uh, parameters right. make that message. I don't know. Okay. So we're calling the function here, right? For the third function, you have to add like uh, some variable name. All right. Well, let's just start with the easiest thing that we see, rec.message, right? And then we have the print here, and we'll just call that message. And so if we're going to do that structure, we call message here. What do you think? Is this going to work? Yes. Well, we got a yes. That's good enough. Let's go for it. And there it is, rec.message hello. So you can access any of the function opportunities that you have in JavaScript inside of Node Nowhere. And so this is why becoming a strong JavaScript developer is really important in fact. The better you are at JavaScript, the easier it is to understand and to create. So we've done a lot. I mean, we've passed stuff all over the place. Are there any questions on what we've done so far? Or if the question is, wait, what's my name again? All right, we'll have to bypass that one. But any real questions based on what we have? Uh, did it pull the hello from the, obviously I pulled it from the, the second cons, but, uh, is, is it because of the fact that third is above where the second rec message is declared in the first, yeah, cons first, that yes, it went so, in order and did that. So that was down below the other second rec message. Would it return? We, you know, had a baby, it's a boy rather than returning. Okay, so your question is, oops, if we put it there. Well, uh, yeah, I, I, I suppose. I, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but. We had a baby. Yes. A okay. So remember, JavaScript runs top to bottom, right to left. Opposite of how we read it. Right. So what's happening is we're going through, we're following it. When it gets to line 15, it says this is the value that we want to assign to this variable system. And then we then pass that. So whatever we have in order, top to bottom, right to left, with a couple of you know minor exceptions. But generally speaking, you'll be right all the times that it matters doing top to bottom, right to left. Does that clear that up? Uh, yeah, most certainly. I I was, I, I, was just, I figured I knew the answer, but uh, you know before it was redeclared to something else. But yeah. and I just wanted the validation. There, you, hey, I'm all about that. I'm good with that. Any other questions on this before we start looking at other things that we can do? We're going to, we'll do a little gatekeeping and then we're going to make a, a global middleware as well. No, that's it. No question. Everybody's good? All right, let's do this. So let's come up here to second and let's modify this just a little bit. Let's say if something, ah, here we go. Let's, let's, we'll make use of our tool. Hello. So if the rec.message is equal to hello, we want to do something, right? And for now, let's say, um, I guess let's just do it next, All right? And we're going to then say, if uh, rec dot message, we had a baby, <laughs> see, 
this is where code complete kind of becomes uh <laughs> it's kind of cool it's like hey wait a minute you've got you've named it twice let's let's test it um also now, actually i just i just realized the question uh where's dot message coming from exactly we created that right so uh, so in second right that's our first one we created that right here okay oh so oh you're just assigning dot message to hello it's not like it's not pulling it and from anywhere nope. it's just oh okay. so we just we just made it up now so it can be dot could... like hi and then it would go hello still no it yep. won't be okay so let's just there oh wow we got a bunch of them there 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 and one more there. So if we got them all correctly, there you go. I see. Okay. So it's just a banana. All right. So if hi equals next. Now let's make this a little bit more interesting. Let's say that if hi equals we had a baby, it's a boy when it gets there, that it, instead of next, it just console log stop, okay? So we're gonna work on our code reading. Starts at second, comes down here, prints that, we assign hello, and now we have this statement. So what's gonna happen? It's gonna start. Where do we end up? on line 22 or 23, which one will run? Stop at 23. Okay, you gotta stop at 23. Let's run it. Uh, maybe, yeah. Boom, 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 right? So notice it went through the entire thing here, right? So it says second middlewares here. Then it went to here because it matches it went to next so it hopped up to first printed first we then console log our hello because that's our rec dot high we then modified it we then called a third function where we pass that value and we print third middlewares and rec high where we get we had a baby it's a boy it then hops back up here, goes to next. And why did we get stopped? This becomes. <laughs> so let's comment this for a second. There's so many hops. I'm so confused right now. So Just the next forth. itself skipped to the next uh, function being the first. So did it have <laughs> to revert back to doing if if it wasn't, <laughs> it didn't get a chance to run that? I, I mean, pretty much correct, right? So you do have to be a little bit cautious when you start chaining middlewares together. So my recommendation even though when you look at most of the readmes, it says, hey, create your middleware before you've created your endpoints. Create your middleware last. It should be the last thing that you create. That way you know what you're actually trying to create, right? So you do your endpoints and you're like, okay, this is repetitious. I need this, I need this to happen. Then we can make your middleware based on your endpoints and it'll make the process a lot easier for you. And yes, that is the most circular mess of code that you should never write. But I think it's really powerful in the sense that you can, you see, we can do anything we want with it. Right? So what I want to do now is we're actually going to remove these. I'm not going to, um, I will push this actually, since we're only working really one line, one file here, I will drop this into the into Slack so you can have this ridiculous bundle of code to look at. Most importantly, though, just try it. But let's do a little bit something different now. So let's create a random uh, random and 
really. <laughs> Sometimes you're like, yeah, I don't know where your AI is at. And so let's just create a math dot. And that looks like it's pretty legitimate. That'll give us a random number between one and 100. And now let's say that we are creating an auth middleware. So we're going to give us this middleware. And we're going to create our auth middleware. And that's going to take rec res and next, right? We're doing middleware. So you want to make sure you have next in there. And what we want to do is, see now it's trying to help out, which is nothing even remotely near what we want. And so let's say that we want to start with, we want to console log our information, right? So let's see what ran number actually gives us. One of the things you'll hear me say a lot, never assume what your data is and always assume that you're wrong. And if you do those two things, you will make it a point to understand your data because we don't really know what we're going to get here. I mean, we have a pretty good idea. It's going to be an integer between zero and a hundred, right? But let's make sure we know it rather than we assume it. So we ran it. And because we put it in the middle, we can hit that endpoint. And we got an 85. Now notice it's still spooling because we don't have a solution happening, right? We don't have a next in here. So let's run it again. Really, 85 again. Come on. Now, 85 again. What's happening? What do you guys think? Why is it giving us the same number again and again and again. Uh, this might be wrong, but are you in callback hell? I could be, but I'm not. Um, okay. We're just not nexting, so we're not moving forward. Um, well, but... oh, is it calling math.random over and over and over again? No, that's the point. It's that. not calling <laughs> it over and over again, right? That's why we're getting the same number because this is only going to run new when this file changes. So how do we solve that problem? Put next after the, rant, the log. All right, so if we put next here, that's going to solve part of our problem. So when we run it, we no longer get that. And notice our number. Okay, let's look at it again, 66. 66. Okay. So that what's happening is this page is running once and assigning that variable. Doesn't matter how many times we call it, it's already assigned that variable to that. So we have to modify our code just a little bit. And what do we want to do? Well, we could make this a function, right? Because we want to control when it runs. And we could say, oh, we'll make that a fat arrow. And now when we run random number, we should get this function. Right? And if we come in here and instead of calling that, we call it the method, 85, 8, 30, 10, because now every time we hit the endpoint, it goes to that middleware and it calls that function. So it's not running it and storing it as a variable, it's storing it as a function that we can utilize anytime we want. So let's remove this for a moment and let's call. So now what we want to do is let's say, sure, we'll call it a token. And because we're simulating what, what's gonna happen in authentication, right? And you'll learn more about authentication. So we're not gonna spend a lot of time on that but we're going to keep create a gatekeeper. And so let's imagine if the token is, how restrictive do we want to be? Ah, our really cool Git is very selective in who it allows to access. So let's say that the number has to be larger than eight. Right? So if the token, is greater, oops, no, we want it to be greater than, let's say 80, what's gonna happen? Well, if it's greater than, you pass and you get to go to next. But 
Otherwise, right, if it does not, we want to send a console log that says nope. Okay. So now we're using a random generated number to decide whether or not you get to enter the awesome world of this is great node fun, right? But this could be your, you know, your information. It doesn't matter how we validate, it's that we are controlling validation. And so we send, <laughs> nope, still got nope. Let's try, and now the problem that we have is, wait a minute, nope, and we're spooling. So how do we handle this nope to not spool? What do you think? So we need to send a response of some kind. So let's send a response of 400. Let's say, yeah, we'll do 401 because you're not authorized. And we'll go ahead and send a JSON message that says, nope. Right? Let's look at that. Okay, so we're here. We run it. Nope, we didn't get through. Nope. Hey, we got through. Now, notice we got through and we have this cannot set headers after they are sent to the client. So this becomes an issue and you're gonna come across it a lot. Expect to see it. That means that we're not hard ejecting here, right? We're not kicking them out, we're just passing them forward, but the code is still gonna try to run down to this. And so you have a couple of options. First option is that you put this in an else statement. And so let's run that and let's, nope, 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 nope. Hey, and we got through. Wait, you can do this else statements like that? No, I didn't do them just like that. Wait, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm lost. <laughs> well, I mean, you're, you're looking at it. It works, right? So okay. you do have the, yeah, you know, if it's a single line because of arrow functions, you don't have to have all that extra stuff, right? And you, so you have a couple of options. One, you can say if else, which works just fine. The other option is you could you could do something and say if you know token is less than, you could do that as well. In this case, else is just empty. And finally, I want to look at one more thing. So we can set our rec dot header, right? This is undefined because we commented where we set that out. But what happens if you send a message in here? Can you send a message in here? And everyone should know the answer. So let's just do message and uh, moving on out. We're gonna move on out. I'm not quite moving up to the east side. <laughs> Who can afford the east side these days? So we're gonna move on out of the east side. How do we access this? And what happens when we run it? So, Nope, 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 nope. Finally, we get through and we get this error. Another one that you're gonna come across quite a bit. And this becomes an issue of our middleware, another middleware, right? Next is, is a middleware. And the spot you'll see this most often is when you make your universal, your global, your all catch error handler down at the bottom, you'll come across this. So next is middleware, which means it has certain functions. So let's call this and say, what happens when we say message? And we run it. Nope, 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 nope we still get the same error, right? Where is this coming from? And this 
next is something that you can control. However, it does not, um, it's not as easily accessible as the, like creating a wreck. So we got through again and we still have the same error. So where this comes in, this message, is you have to be able to handle that as well. And that will come in if you run error rec res next, like you do in your air handler, then you can pass that message inside of there. And so just be careful because you're gonna come across that, you're going to do it and you're gonna get that message. And somebody's gonna send me a deal and say, Zach, Wait, I'm confused. How, how is that, what's going? How Okay. How is that working? So if we have an error handler, we can say server.use. Ah, that's not use. And inside of that, we have error, rec res next. And what is it doing? Come on. And so then you can do res.status. We'll say, so this would be your air handler, your universal air handler, and message. And so if we, which is, that's not really an air, of course, but so <clears throat> now you get this message is not defined, right? Because we're trying to pass a straight variable and we don't have a way to get that. And that comes in on the error. And when you build out your middleware, obviously we're not, this is not an error, right? We're not sending an error because this is success. But when you pass something through next as an error, so if you when you do your if statements, if 400, we want to pass that and you do a next, when you send that as an error.message, you can start to control your messaging through the next. But the next is going to show up down here. And look at, if you haven't already done it, look, I think it's yesterday's assignment. Um, there you build out a, a universal air handler right here that makes use of the middleware next to be able to pass messages. But in this particular instance, we have a success message, right? This is the good thing that's happening. If this was the end, if we had switched it around and we wanted to send an error, we could use an error handler like this. So, so how is it working exactly? So if it doesn't work, it goes to the else statement and then it carries on over to the error thing or? Yeah, if you were writing, say you had something that was like, if, uh, uh, let's say, uh, I'm trying to think of one. Okay, if name is not included, right? And you want to throw an error, right? And so you want it to say, hey, this is a problem. You can you could say um, in your next, you could then say status, uh, 400, for instance, message missing name. And if it reaches here and it passes this next to the air handler and you have an error dot status and an error dot message, then you have the ability to control what errors come out of it by controlling the object that you send through the next middleware. 
okay, so if it fails, next will push that status to the universal. To this then, universal down here. And then Correct. if it has it, it can display the error. Correct. Oh, and that's oh, how you can build custom error handling. Ooh. Hi, little one. Every time without having to write custom errors for each possible error. Okay, I see. Okay. Any other questions? Gosh, it's like, I want to pass out. You've got the tone of a boring man. Ding, ding, ding. He's probably got like some nice metal going on in his headphones. What, what music are you listening to? Huh? I mean, who are you listening to? Oh, I don't know who he is. <laughs> no, I would say he probably. Oh, I thought, I thought you were. Yeah. No. Any other questions? I think that's it for me. John. Um, I got a question. Um, in the uh, homework project, whatever you want to call it, uh, mm -hmm. yesterday, um in the well there was a there was a few times but specifically um when you're posting uh, i'm a little confused when to use like async and all right wait. why don't you go ahead and share your screen sure i will stop script sharing um let's look uh, at it it's just the it's just the code um it's not open in vs code it's just in github that's but, fine uh, i see like a explain to me like i'm five like <laughs> explanation is it is it showing this screen properly i'm yeah. still uh we're just looking at you again uh oh can you well, see maybe... like the code oh now it is it finally showed up okay um like right here can i zoom in i can't see a preview of what i'm showing but whatever yep um okay let me try this again is that better Yep, know. we're good. Okay. Um, so like here it's saying we want to post, and then I had to look at the solution code, uh, the video for this part, because I couldn't get it on my own. I'm a little confused as to why we need to await for this method to run. I don't okay, really get so it. Okay, let's, so let's walk through our code. So sure. we're sending a post at slash ID slash post. Right. And once we hit once we successfully make it through validate user id and validate post mm -hmm. we get our endpoint and the first thing that we want to do remember we go right to left right so the first thing right to left is this object on 82 to 85 right yeah and so we're saying reach out to the post model and we want to do the method insert and what we're inserting is user ID and text. I, I and get now, that. I'm saying, but, like, why can't we just, why can't we just do like post dot insert? Well, like, that's why what do I'm we need to, to like? To, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to catch you off. About to get. It's okay. So we have this object that we're inserting, and we're we're not in development. We're working on the same machine, so it's very fast. But what we have to assume is that JavaScript will run faster than the internet and the database and the internet back again before it hits line 86. Okay. So we are saying we need to hold off on assigning the variable R with this information until it's done. Okay. okay because we don't know how long it's gonna take. On your local machine, it goes very fast and it might be able to assign the value R before line 86 tries to respond. But in the internet, it's not gonna happen because it has to, remember this is this back end, it's going to receive a response from the front end. It's then going to contact this other part and your database may or may not be even in the same hemisphere, right? It's then going to take all that stuff. It's going to insert it. It's going to chug, 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 chug. And eventually it's going to spit it out. And that's what we're doing. 
is we're waiting for that to be assigned before we move on to the next line of code. Gotcha. Okay. okay. So it's that way it won't crash. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And it, it's really important that you all should study a bit on the event loop and understand because you're most likely going to get a question from an interview anyway that's going to ask you what is single threaded non-blocking code or what is asynchronous code and how how does that affect and so single threaded it's going it only runs on one thread and runs top to bottom but asynchronous non-blocking means that when it reaches something that's going to take time it pushes that to the event loop the event loop spins. The event loop is actually written using lib, uh, lib UV and C. And so it can multi-process, multi-thread and all kinds of fancy stuff while it's spinning. Node will continue moving down the table of the list of code. When it gets a response, it will then take the response to what it needs to do and then continue moving forward. Okay. And I, I think probably the best analogy for that is if you were a single threaded blocking code, let's say that you had made dinner, you had guests the whole nine yards, right? Had a whole bunch, and you're the one that has to do the, the cleanup. And so you have your list of tasks, you have to get the dishes, you have to clean the stove, all these things, right? This is our code. Right. If it was not asynchronous, what would happen is you'd say, you'd come down, you're standing in the kitchen, you say, Zach, go get your dinner plate. You sit there. And I go get the dinner plate and eventually I get it back. And you say, oh, after I get the dinner plate, I put it in the sink. Where asynchronous code says, Zach, go get the dinner plate. Zach goes to get the dinner plate. He's moved off onto this and you say, well, my next thing is to take the dishes off the stove, put those in the sink. Zach come back with the plate. Now you put that plate in the sink. Gotcha. Okay. And so that's how you can do multiple things and, and why note is very fast. But we have to have, you know, we have to have a way not to stop the code because otherwise, like I said, you just sit there wait. <laughs> and imagine that a back end has a lot of different endpoints, right? I mean, we're doing one at a time. But like when I worked for CBS, my endpoints were getting 25 to 30 million hits in a week. Wow. So we have to have a whole lot of those. And so it, all those different endpoints are happening. We can't block the code, we can't stop it. And so what happens is you say, Zach, go get your plate. Lorenzo, go get your plate. Josh, go get your plate, right? All these things are happening and you keep moving back and forth to, oh, finally got a plate, put it in, okay. Bob, go get your plate. All right, put it in, all, right. all these things are happening. And that's how that non-blocking code and why we have to use callbacks, promises, async, I think it just gets lost, like when you're doing it, like on your own computer, because you know, like if you run like it, for this example, like dot insert, it, it runs like that. So you right. don't really, I don't, for me personally, I, I don't really like tend to think in terms of like, oh, it's taking like you know, point oh three seconds or whatever it takes to actually fetch that data because it seems instantaneous to like the naked eye. Right. I think but that's as soon why you've deployed it, it, that's where, it, and right. you may have, I've got that M1 with sixteen AI core. It usually on local, it can usually beat it. But the second you deploy it, it doesn't stand a chance. Gotcha. And so that's really what it is. It's 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 just allowing everything to be done before you use another piece of code that depends on the result from the thing above it. Gotcha. Thank you. You're most welcome. Anything else? So tomorrow is sprint challenge. Um, Please? regarding yeah. the sprint challenge, um, do we have to write the database helper functions for tomorrow? I don't know. Let me stop this and I will, and then let's.